This is a committee meeting of the whole Frankfurt Village Board, and we call the meeting to order, and we ask our clerk, Brian Fury, to take the roll, please. Okay. Mayor Holland? Here. Trustee Petro? Here. Trustee Ogle? Here. Trustee Farina? Here. Trustee Clavio? Here. Trustee Borelli? Here. Trustee Severia? Present. All present. And I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes of our last meeting on February 12th. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, and I'll start off by just apologizing to the public. Uh, we did get started uh, 15 minutes late and we were having some technical difficulties uh, getting on to YouTube. Uh, we are on channel six, we have verified that, so we feel this is a proper uh, electronic virtual meeting in the sense of uh, uh, how meetings are being operated in this pandemic. Uh, and we're here to talk about the closure of Kansas Street between uh, Ash and Oak. I suppose uh, we ought to start with uh, uh, an administrative report from either the police department or village administrator who would like to update us on all these activities that have been going on this last week to get this thing uh, in place. Sure, Bob, you want to go with it? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll start with uh, what we've been trying to do is, as you know, with the, the governor's executive order to allow for uh, outdoor dining, uh, that uh, we work to put together a basic permit form. We also have a letter of indemnification and uh, we also requested the business provide us a certificate of insurance. Basically on the permit uh, form, it just lays out the guidelines uh, similar to what we had uh, published uh, on the website with uh, dining al fresco in Frankfurt and uh, we had sent, uh, sent those out and we have received, I believe up to this point, uh, six uh, applications uh, for uh, expanded uh, outdoor dining. Uh, the key is with this is that uh, the villages, uh, if there's tents involved in, and I think the biggest uh, issue is that the uh, public and the businesses need to understand is that uh, this is a very fluid situation and we're trying our best to allow uh, the businesses to uh, operate to have some outdoor dining to, uh, to help their, uh, their situation. Uh, the other key to this is that uh, the letter of indemnification obviously is just because of the fact that uh, for the village that we are not uh, making any warranties or uh, anything to do with if uh, equipment that, that's used to make sure that it's properly stored or anything like that. So Again, the good news is, is that people are, uh, are looking at it. And I think uh, as a whole, the community seems uh, excited about the opportunity to have some outdoor dining. Uh, and uh, that's where we're at right now as far as the actual process. And, and I do want to compliment the staff. I've been involved in this process and uh, it gets a little complicated because uh, there isn't a lot of guidance from the state. Uh, so we proceeded. We definitely had some restaurants who wanted to expand their outdoor seating uh, and we had some residents who were encouraging us to allow uh, restaurants to expand their outdoor seating. Uh, and there are a lot of uh, technical questions that come up when we do that. Uh, one issue that came up during this process is that a number of residents came to us and suggested that the uh, three restaurants on Ash, on uh, Kansas Street between Ash and Oak uh, should be allowed to expand uh, even more uh, by going into the street and uh, that would necessitate the closure of Kansas between Ash and Oak. And that's the part of the issue that I felt was appropriate for the entire village board to weigh in on. Uh, that part of the issue impacts other businesses. Uh, it's not uh, just a technical question of how do we allow for this, uh, but now we're on public property where people expect there to be a street, um, and they have a right to expect that. Uh, 
there are other businesses that are involved, there are parking issues, there are other concerns, um, and not the least of which is uh, some of the messages we received uh, at least implied to me that some people think this could turn into a great party event uh, in the evenings. And we're, folks, we're still in this uh, pandemic. We're still in uh, a situation where people can get this virus and we can't allow uh, our people to be put in danger. We can't allow large crowds to gather. We can't allow even small crowds uh, to gather. We're still in a phase, even in phase three, that starts at midnight tonight, that uh, says no gatherings of more than 10 people, uh, unless there's appropriate social uh, distancing, that at least six feet of distance, not between tables, but between the people. Uh, so how do you do that? Um, and how do we make sure our public is safe if we uh, do these things and that uh, there's a proper attitude going on with the restaurant operators uh, and such. And that I think the staff has gone a long way uh, to preparing people for that. But uh, the question comes about uh, closing uh, Kansas between Ash and Oak. And I think that's what we ought to try to stick to discussing. Uh, does anybody want to start with comments or you know, you know me, I can ramble on all evening about it, but uh, Trustee Clavio, please. Mr. Mayor, I was just gonna not comment, but ask if maybe um, Rob or Jeff or anybody might be able to comment on any of the questions that were in some of the public comments, like who's paying, what kind of barriers, blah, 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 blah. Because I think that may give us as a board some additional information as we're reviewing this. Sure. Uh, as far we'll as the Rob and let him answer. Uh, thank you. As far as the actual closure itself, if uh, if, if if the board approves it, the uh, the village would install the actual barriers that would close the street because we'd want to make sure that they are adequate to uh, protect any any residents or any seating that's out there. We also have uh, uh, the ability to place uh, signage in order to show people that uh, the area is closed. So that will basically be our portion. So all of the traffic signage and the closure itself will be done by the village. Anything that has to do with the outdoor seating or outdoor dining itself is completely on, on the restaurants themselves, just like if they were on uh, private property. So that would include if, uh, if alcohol is to be served, uh, fencing and controlled access points, it would include all of the tables and chairs and any other equipment that goes with it. So ultimately the village is just responsible for uh, the, act, uh, the act of closing the street physically. Thank you. A couple of other things, Trustee Clavio, uh, that I was pleased with in the form that the restaurants are signing, uh, if they happen to be one of those three restaurants in the downtown area, they agree to require their employees to park in the lots that are further away and they're required to uh, make their employees agree to not park in any of the street parking or in the brighter green parking lot, which is according to that plan we had discussed uh, quite some time ago. So I, we're hoping that that can be helpful to uh, help with the parking uh, issue. Also uh, on Ash Street, there has been concern about parking there and we would place temporary signs that uh, in effect, I think they actually just say, uh, parking for uh, Ash Street customers only, I believe is the wording. Uh, and that, uh, those, that signage would go up. And I think everybody understands that we're only talking about closing Kansas from Ash to Oak. Uh, and I mean, yeah, Kansas from Ash to Oak and Ash would remain open at all times. And the issue would be that that part of Kansas that is from Ash to White Street would become one way heading eastbound. And so there will be some form of a barrier 
at White Street to stop cars from turning in and some sort of a no entry uh, type uh, signage there. Trustee Petro. Thank you, Mayor Holland, for clarifying some of the parking and just summarizing some of the concerns that did come with the closure of the street and some of the restricted parking and obviously a little bit of rerouting our traffic. Um, I know we've talked obviously at length around the downtown parking and this is a temporary situation. So I think temporary measures to help um, uh, not only offer the outdoor par parking, but also make sure that our small businesses have access for their customers. The other one that comes to mind for me is the retail stores that would be in between that are on Kansas Street. And so one of the parking lots that we hadn't really talked about before is the lot behind um, the buildings there that would be public parking. And I, I bring this up as I kind of drove through town today, just kind of assessing what is actually um, taking place in the different lots, you know, what are the openings and availability? And I think one, we, we need to make sure that we have access to fire, you know, fire lanes and emergency vehicles being able to be accessed in that lot, as well as we have retail stores or hair salons that might have um, handicap accessibility. And so where could we possibly offer that if, if Kansas is now closed? How could they access those streets? Could we do some temporary assignment of those parking and maybe that back lot, just a, a thought. And uh, just to uh, answer Trustee Petro, that uh, they still will have uh, an access point to the front of their building uh, from the brighter green parking lot as well. So they'll still be able to get to the front of their business So because the, the seating will not uh, okay. entail, will not go across there. And so we'll put up the barriers to the streets, but the restaurants will put up the barriers and the fencing that will remain open. Is that what you're saying? Just trying to picture it. Yes. Uh, to Trustee Petro's point, uh, it's an interesting one because most of us know that that parking lot behind Francesca's and Fat Rosie's is typically full of cars uh, that are owned by employees of either Francesca's or Fat Rosie's. Uh, should we entertain that if we expand this uh, uh, dining area that we tell those restaurants uh, their employees can't park there anymore? I don't have any problem with that. I don't think it's unreasonable that uh, they park in the lots that are a little bit further away. Uh, and then customers could actually use those lots. Any comments on that concept? Oh, the police chief has a comment. We better hear it. Well, there's no way of enforcing it. Um, so when they don't listen and don't do it, uh, outside of if we're going to tell them we're going to take their business license away or shut them down, um, no matter what we do, we could tell them all day long that it's for customers only, but if somebody parks there, uh, unless we pass an ordinance, which would take 30 days uh, to restrict some sort of parking or time parking, we don't have an enforcement mechanism, which will lead to them calling us constantly saying, these people are parking here, we want you to do something about it. Well, your last comment is the problem. We, yes. we don't want our police getting all the phone calls from either other businesses or residents saying, that's an employee parking there, and we don't want you to get involved in that. It, it's not a police issue. It's it's my problem. If if we if we say if we make an agreement with these restaurant operators that they're going to tell their employees as part of their employment they can't park in those lots, then somehow, if they do, we have to bring it back to the restaurant uh, operator. And it's an administrative issue, not a legal issue or a police issue. And you're running the same thing with the employees of Fuse who like to park back there, as well as the Astri people, who if somebody does park there and decides to go to a restaurant and they call us for the same reason, because I we get calls from them already, um, it's also going to create issues when you restrict that parking that way. Well, I think I think I'm hearing it's not a very good idea. <laughs> <laughs> at least, uh, at least making up the no. idea right now. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, you, you can put the signs up and hope for people to obey by it, but I don't know that they will. Okay, Trustee Ogham. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have I have a couple questions, which some of the other ones may have. These will be procedural, and uh, Rob or or um, or Jeff or whatever may be able to answer these. Uh, I just kind of go through them real quick, and then kind of pick and clean. The uh, the cleanup of that area, uh, restaurants, obviously, where the streets are going to be dirty, food's going to fall. Um, how is that gonna be handled? Will this street be closed down for this entire time period? Um, are we going to be allowing tents? Uh, and this is specific to the section we're closing on Kansas Street. Somebody who's on private property, um, you know, a completely different, different issue. Um, will there be amplified music allowed? Uh, will there be non-amplified music allowed in those spaces? Uh, what are the hours going to be um, for the outside areas. And is this something that we should be reviewing uh, as a board on whether this is working? And if there's a re renewal period, like we will go 30 days with this and then we will renew it as we go into the next phase. Um, how will the carry out parking uh, be handled? Uh, there's a restaurant in a neighboring community that um, we went to the other day and they just started their carry out and it was absolute disaster. Uh, it takes a little bit of time for that, but uh, for these three restaurants, they're already doing carry out. I think they've got a good system down, but now we're going to change the areas where they're, they're accessing this. Uh, I think that's kind of important. Um, another thought with this too, the restaurants in phase three, I don't think are allowed to have anybody inside other than for in and out carry out, which is why the governor has kind of um, tossed them a bone, but it's still, I think, what, 25% capacity? And with the public spacing, I don't think we're going to have the same sort of parking issues that we might have during the summer when we're at a full capacity for all of these restaurants. Uh, they are limited on who they can seat outside. Uh, I think it's a completely different dynamic. Again, it's something that none of us have experienced. Years and decades of service uh, with the restaurants, they have it down to a science and now we throw this on its head. Um, so those are, those are some of the questions I had that I think also some of the residents uh, would probably like to hear how those are going to be addressed. Thank you, Mayor. I'll, uh, I'll preface, the, or preface the answers, Keith, with one of the things that uh, the restaurants are signing or agreeing to is that we can modify, change, or just end any of these rules, any of their privilege to move into a, uh, an additional space at any time we want to, uh, and for any reason. And I think we even threw in there that you don't have a right of due process, uh, that this is a temporary situation and we're going to have to judge this a little bit as it goes. Uh, but Rob, maybe you can answer some of the specific questions. Uh, I'll be happy to, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and as you said, uh, that is the caveat on in there that it does say that uh, we reserve the right to, to change or modify any and all of the we're allowing uh, at any time without notice because of the fact that it's going to be a fluid situation. And if we find that it's it's just not working and it's potentially creating a hazard, we, we may need to shut it down. So we'll definitely keep an eye on it. Uh, to go through the specific uh, questions, as far as cleanup is concerned, that is a caveat that is in there. Uh, the restaurants are responsible and it, that list is part of the rules that they're uh, supposed to maintain it just like they would maintain their, uh, their restaurant inside, that they're supposed to keep the, the street clean. Uh, and uh, it's at least, uh, and at night when they're done, they're supposed to make sure they do a cleanup. We have put in there that if uh, we, for whatever reason, end up using our own public works people that have to do any type of work or the police, extra police is needed, they'll be charged $70 an hour and invoiced for it. And I will invoice them for it if we have uh, those kind of specific issues. So hopefully, again, they will recognize that they've been given a great privilege to be able to, to expand uh, into the street. Uh, as far as tents in that area, we have not gotten any requests for tents. 
that would pose a, a very big problem as far as proper anchoring uh, that area. Uh, I, John and I, uh, the Chief Rick and I actually were out there the other day looking to try to figure out if they made a request and the reality is it would be very difficult to, to properly anchor it down. And I would not support a tent that would go across our public property because it, it, I think it just creates an extra level of uh, a hazard that uh, we potentially would absorb. Uh, also, we're not allowing any uh, amplified music, any outdoor music, live, uh, streamed, recorded, anything like that outside. The idea is this is just supposed to be kind of a, a gathering point. Uh, I think the mayor had alluded to uh, it in previous meetings that we're really not, we're not trying to recreate the, the interior feel of the restaurants outside. This is, a, again, a privilege to be able to have outside dining to support the businesses. Uh, the hours, I think, is something we just have to decide. We haven't set the hours yet. Uh, I, one of the concerns that I have, obviously, is that uh, if we go after dark, that they need to make sure that they have some type of auxiliary lighting beyond our street lights to properly illuminate the curbs and everything. But they, that, again, is in the, in the form that says that they would have to show us what they're going to do, depending on the hours that you would allow them to go. And I think the other thing is too, is just with having people gathered out there, how late you actually want them to be uh, in the street. Uh, as far as uh, renewing, again, I think we have it in there that we have the right to, to cancel if we, uh, and revoke if we need to. So I don't know if there's any necessity for uh, renewing it. And as far as the carry out parking, yes, uh, really for uh, um, Fat Rosie's, it's probably the biggest issue because they would not have an ability to get anybody to get curbside service at the time. Francesca's would still obviously have Oaks, Oak Street access to be able to have somebody uh, potentially pull up to get curbside service. And again, same thing uh, next to uh, the, the barriers on at Ash Street, the Trails Edge potentially could still do some uh, carry out business that way. So the, the only one again would be potentially affected would be uh, would be fat rosies. I think you could probably just make them. What I would add, Rob, is that uh, one that I would add, Rob, is that um, we we want this to end at phase four. Uh, mm -hmm. That that it it all is only from now until phase four. In phase four, the restaurants are supposed to be able to open up inside. So they go back to their standard seating area outside for all of them. And that correct. may happen. That is correct. It happen in, it happen in West Side. Yep. Okay, Trustee Farina. Thanks, Mayor Hallin. And I appreciate a lot of the questions that have been asked. They were on my list too, so I appreciate the answers. I, I'm excited that our businesses are going to be able to reopen tomorrow. I know I've spoken with business owners, both non-essential and essential, about their journey and about their excitement for tomorrow. Um, fortunately, restaurants have been able to be open and have curbside pickup through the pandemic, unlike our non-essential businesses on Ash Street and Kansas and other areas in downtown. So I'm excited and I know we have always been very supportive of our business community and wanting to make sure that they can do what they do best to sell their services or products. Um, as, I, as I think about moving forward with this opportunity, I do think of a number of considerations. Um, one is, you know, making this decision in a vacuum. Um, I know a few of us offline and years past and such have talked about, you know, maybe street closures in the future, something like a Euro pubs feel, uh, cobblestone streets and planters, you know, an idealistic, beautiful looking common space for us to share and have available for the community. And this isn't that. And it concerns me that we're moving so quickly on something because typically in the policy arena, you have time, whether it's months, sometimes years, to thoroughly discuss and debate this and have it go through the, the right committees and staff persons to uh, make the right decisions and have the best policy put forth. So I'm a little concerned about the, the hastiness in this decision right now. Um, and while I, I think it's a neat idea, and I know we've had a lot of public support, and I appreciate all the residents who emailed about this, um, 
we still are in a pandemic. So I look at gatherings in Kansas Street um, and think to myself, well, people are still transmitting this disease. And uh, I would hate for it to get out of hand or too large of a gathering. Um, I especially think about Sundays with uh, Bright Art Green hosting the country market. You got 100 people across the street, 100 people on Kansas Street. Is that a large gathering? And that's phase five. Another component of public safety, of course, is shots on Kansas Street. Um, I'm very concerned about open liquor on Kansas Street. That is something that we have never gone and supported before. Uh, we've been very particular in ensuring that our alcohol consumption is within the garden or the beer tent prior to that. And the Chamber of Commerce has done a good job working and partnering with the village and our police department to make sure that there's security, make sure there's plastic cups, make sure there's professionals who are trained to serve alcohol. And I appreciate that. I also know during wine walks in the recent Champagne Walk, our downtown business association has done a really good job again, working with our police department to make sure that any tastings stay within the businesses and they don't go out in the public right away and such. And we've been really tough on that. You know, Bluesgrass Festival, we don't allow alcohol on Kansas Street. Other requests we've said no. So this would be a really change of events for Frankfurt and I'm uncomfortable with it quite frankly. Um, I would hate for us to move forward with something like this and then this comes out to something else a year or two from now that maybe we didn't want. It could be a very slippery slope. Um, I also think about our image of downtown. Many of you who here and those before us have worked really hard to create this idealistic community-oriented family place. You know, often people will go downtown and they say, oh, this is like Mayberry, you know, a time when it was simpler and, 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 and a different way of life. Um, again, shots on Kansas Street, that doesn't sound like Mayberry. Uh, that's party time now. And I would hate for us to have something get out of control and uh, harm this opportunity and then harm our reputation as well as a board and as a community. So I think it's something that we really need to consider um, tonight and whether we re re want to go forward. And I know, you know, some of the comments I've heard is, well, the governor said, and the governor also said we can have pot shops downtown. The governor said we can have video gaming downtown. And we've said no to those issues unanimously as a board because it does not align with our values as a town and our vision of what downtown is. So I'm very skeptical about this. Um, I think there are a number of other questions too that are probably out there that we need to discuss tonight, but I did want to share that with the committee and let you know my uh, concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Farina. And Trustee Borelli, you had a comment. No, I just wanted to say, I, well, first of all, I think it's, uh, you know, I'm glad we're talking about it. Um, I, I asked that we talked about it at the last board meeting. Um, obviously, there was a lot of uh, public input asking about it. I'm, I'm thankful we're having this meeting. Uh, I've been involved with the board as clerk and now trustee for almost five years. This is by far the most public response, the most response we received from the public on, a, on an item since I've been involved. So it's, it's unbelievable. And I think we had 75 plus uh, responses formally, and basically over 70 of them were positive, asking us to, to, to go forward with this. We're helping our businesses. Um, I'm not an infectious disease doctor. I don't claim to be one. I look to the state for guidance. Uh, we live in a state that's very, um, there's a democratic governor. Uh, it's taken a very conservative approach when it comes to reopening. Um, the state is telling us that we can reopen and we can, we can socially, we, the restaurants operate outside, they socially distance, um, that's safe. And so I rely on those, on the IEPH for that information and make my, my decisions based on that. So um, we're allowing all the other restaurants to expand their operations. We're trying to help out these businesses. Uh, Kansas Street's unique because they don't have that private property to take advantage of. Um, I think this is, I think this is a no-brainer to me um, based on the, the public support for it. Um, as far as uh, shots on Kansas Street, that's ridiculous. That's not what this is about. Um, we got guidance today that there will be no standing room. This is dining only. Um, you, you know, to, to just even market it like that is ridiculous. And uh, that's not what this is about. This is seated, outdoor, outdoor seating, 
spaced apart. There's no standing. This isn't about, uh, this isn't a beer tent. This is eating outside for three weeks or four weeks, phase four. Do you think that we should allow a hard liquor on Kansas Street, even if you're sitting? You're sitting at your table. I, I yes, you should be able to order whatever you you want to order. But this isn't this isn't a bar. There's no standing. This is we're sitting at tables. There's no music. Uh, this isn't a bar atmosphere. This is dining outside in a very sophisticated town that we that we live in. I, I don't see the issue with it. Yes, there are different images of what we're talking about here, and there is potential for it to go in the direction that Trustee Petro is suggesting it could. And it's one of the reasons we put pretty strong statements into the agreement that these people are signing, that if things get carried away, if we're going the wrong direction, if there are problems, uh, if, it's, if it's not just a family that lives together goes down and sits at a table and has uh, a dinner. Um, if it becomes something else, uh, it's going to have to end or it's going to have to be modified. Uh, I, think, I think we're in agreement on that. I hope we are. Um, Trustee Petro. Thank you. You know, I just want to echo what Adam said about the public comments. You know, I was really encouraged. I have been encouraged with all the communication that we've gotten from residents throughout this pandemic. And it has been a time where the town has had to stay apart, but come together with different decisions and things that are happening within our community. Um, and I would agree. I think the staff has done some good research as we kind of asked them to go do as towns were exploring these ideas and come with a solution that, hey, this is an agreement, is, is an exception because they do not have the private parking lot that it would be on a public street. And then we're also making other temporary you know, suggestions around the parking pieces of it, that nothing is permanent and it's an agreement, right? There's that compromise. Yes, we'll move to the streets, but hey, we need our employees to park somewhere else. And there's guidelines in place that if it doesn't go the way that we anticipate it, because we don't have the crystal ball, right? We've never done this before, but there's clear support for it. We feel like we have the right tools in place to guard, you know, the right guardrails, pun intended there, to make sure that it is successful. And if it's not, we adjust, we come back or we don't do it. But I think the absence of not doing anything is not the right decision either. Trustee Severia. So 96% positive response on this. Um, I think that the due diligence that staff has done, getting agreement on parking, parking, getting the restaurants to agree to have their employees not take the prime parking. We've been fighting that forever. So to Aspen, Colorado, Vail, Colorado, very classy towns, they all have this. It's not out of control. They have, you know, it's dining, they have drinks. I think this is a great idea. We've, we've got safeguards in place. If it doesn't work out, we pull it. Thank you, Gene. Trustee Clavio. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just two comments. I, uh, it, I, and I apologize, I've not read the Alfresco dining criteria as yet that we put out for the residents, I mean, for the, the businesses. But I, I want to make sure that we have the leverage in there that if they're not meeting accessibility issues for handicapped people, that we can shut them down as well. And I don't know if that was captured or not. Um, so that's my first question. Yeah. The, the second point I want to make is that, you know, I, I think that when we overkill any issue as government, we undermine and disrespect our residents and our voters and our patrons and our citizens. There are always going to be a few who are going to abuse everything. That's why they park in no parking zones. That's why they, you know, park in fire zones, park on top of fire hydrants. But overwhelmingly, for our residents who have expressed their concerns, they've indicated that this is something that we should be moving forward with. And if we've got the tool to 
pull it from them if it's abused, which we will because we've developed that criteria. Let's have some respect for the people in our community to try it and move forward off of that. That's what I, that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, John. Uh, I know that the ADA question has come up uh, in some specific issues, so I know our staff is watching for that in the plans. Uh, Rob, is that a fair uh, statement? Yeah, uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. I mean, they'll have to have uh, some of the ability for uh, people with uh, special needs to be able to have access as well. So, whether they need to construct a ramp to get down to it, that I'm. I'm guessing the easiest thing for them would be allow those people that uh, they already have the sidewalk, uh, the outside dining for the sidewalk. If you have people with special needs, they could use that and it's already handicapped accessible. Good. Well, to bring us so toward that, uh, that, conclusions. That go ahead. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, just one more question. That was, that was part of my question about that back lot around the retail places. So, yeah. so Rob, could you comment like where the access is? Like, how will that? What will that look like if somebody's trying to get? Will they have compliant access to the retail as well? Uh, yes, I they think we be, have uh, to be able to. Yes. Okay, that's what I wanted to ensure. That's going to that's going to be. That's what I, yes, when we, uh, when they do their setup, uh, you know, obviously it's hard to see from their plan, but that's one of the things that we're going to look at to make sure that, you know, for few salon that it doesn't create a dynamic that now people can't get to, uh, can't get to the salon that need, you know, again, anybody that has special needs. Okay. What I'm hearing is a consensus that we should move ahead and uh, close Kansas from ash to oak. Uh, and I, there is still a question on the, the time. How late can these operations go? Uh, I've suggested to our staff that we have a standard time that we've used in the past. That's 11 o'clock at night. That would generally mean that nobody would be would be able to come in after 10 o'clock and shortly thereafter, probably 10, 15, and certainly no later than 10, 30, uh, all serving would have to stop. Uh, so that didn't seem unreasonable. Um, any other, anyway, uh, any thoughts about the time? Uh, I support what you're saying, Mayor. I support what you're saying, Mayor. I think that that makes sense. Uh, obviously, if, as long as the uh, vendors are willing to provide the lighting that uh, Minister Keisha had mentioned earlier, especially in the, in the absence of uh, music, um, there's no standing. Uh, I, I don't see an issue with extending the hours or keeping the hours as is. Thank you. Well, most of them have hours now. They go to one o'clock in the morning, but we would cut that back to 11. Trustee Farina. Uh, two questions. Uh, one, has the bowling alley expressed any interest of being on Kansas? Yes. Uh, Mari has not expressed interest on being on Kansas, but being on the private property uh, where she opens up during Fall Fest. Okay, so that may be in addition to the closing of Kansas between Oak and Ash Street. Well, it would not impact uh, public property, but it would be that area that she parks her car in, the area right at the bottom of the steps. Okay, and then another question, when you're going down Ash Street and you turn right east, there's parking, diagonal parking, and I believe that diagonal parking points northwest. Would those diagonal lanes be switched so there can be parking there too? Or is that already? Well, my feeling was, is, you know, across the street. My feeling was is that we would leave that, all of that parking would remain exactly as it is today and it's all available. 
It's easy enough to turn your car into uh, the parking places, even though they don't go the right way. Okay. Okay, because yeah, when you go to Ash, you'll kind of end up angling. It, it, it could be a traffic issue, something maybe to look at. There is. Um, I don't think we adjust restrooms either. So all the customers can use the restrooms in the restaurants that they're, they're at? Yes. Yes. Yes, that's correct. They can, they, they can use the in, inside restaurants, but they have to be, uh, in, uh, access to the interior has to be monitored. So, uh, with that, uh, oh, Trustee Borelli. Well, I was just going to ask. I was thinking the uh, we would restripe the uh, north part of Kansas Street. Just I, I don't know. That's a little. Anyway, I'll I'll let the chief and the staff figure that out. But I was I was thinking we would restripe that. You would lose a couple spots, but um, just from a safety perspective, the north side of Kansas Street. Um, east Ash. That's, that's exactly what I was mentioning. They go, they go toward versus toward Prairie Park right now. And if you're just turning right and it's a one way, it'd be easier if they were, they were diagonal toward Prairie Park. So you can easily park there versus having to swerve your car around and oddly um, back up or reverse. I, I know too that a few residents west of Kansas were very concerned about parking in that in that area. I don't know. Are we addressing any residential parking challenges for Elwood or Kansas Street residents? I would think you have to leave it as it is to start restricting parking. You'll have too many places to restrict. Everybody's freezing up. Yeah, yeah. there are problems okay. with the, we're, we're the like a few really second delay. There's going to be as big a parking problem as there normally is in downtown Frankfurt. There aren't going to be as many people because the restaurants don't hold that many people, even with the expanded dining. So we expect fewer people than in a normal summer. So with that, is there something more that we need to discuss here tonight or can we move on? Uh, I think there is a so, consensus here to direct the staff to uh, proceed with this process of closing the street um, and following uh, the procedures we've talked about. Is this something Good. we'll I, vote I on, on Monday or is it? Uh, well, I don't think it requires a vote of the board. Uh, okay. That would be my impression that uh, the staff actually has the ability to close streets. And this is again, a temporary closure. This is not anything permanent whatsoever. And hopefully it doesn't last very long, frankly, and we go to phase four. And that'll be the end of it. Okay. Man, were you making uh, a motion? Well, I didn't make one. I don't know if we even need one. I didn't think we did. All right. Rob, any comments on that? Mr. Mayor, it's, uh, I mean, again, you can do it by just a voice vote uh, out of a consensus if you want, just to make sure that you, you can make sure that you truly have the consensus to do this. Okay. I'd ask that we call so, it a roll. Well, we'll go to, we'll go. Yeah, so I will entertain a motion to uh, direct the staff to close uh, Kansas from Ash to Oak. Uh, based on a lot of conditions that we talked about here and are already in writing uh, on our website. So moved. Second. So moved, Mr. Can Harris. we have a motion that hasn't been on our agenda? Well, that's why it I wasn't going to bring agenda. up a motion. Good point, Margaret. 
Yeah, that's why I was asking if it was going to be on Monday's right. meeting because we could we could put a question if we wanted to. I'm not suggesting we do or don't. I just wanted to understand the procedure. The closure of Kansas Street is on the agenda of the committee. And you can take action on it. Procedurally speaking, okay. we can we don't need a motion, period. What we can do is take a straw poll of the trustees right. to determine if you have a consensus or not. There's a good idea. Okay, the same thing is now not a motion, it's a straw poll. And let's go to Clerk Fury and see where everybody stands. Okay. <clears throat> Trustee Farina? No. Did, did you hear me? So, no. No. Okay. <laughs> you heard me. Okay. No. Trustee Clavio? <laughs> In favor. What? Trustee. I'm sorry. Say that again. Trustee Clavio? Provided all the stuff we talked about. Okay. In favor, hey, provided hey, all the stuff. Thumbs, thumbs up, thumbs down. down. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yes. Okay. Trustee Pirelli, you said yes. Trustee Ogle. Yes. Trustee Ogle? Yes. Trustee Petro. Yes. <laughs> Still yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Trustee Severia. Trustee Severia. Absolutely. Where is he? Okay. Straw poll carries. I think it's good it was a straw vote. That's the most unusual vote I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, just so you know, okay, procedurally, is there any other on the agenda, you can take Is there any other business for this meeting? I think Rob was saying well, something. And we did have quite a big up. Margaret, did you have something? I, I think Rob was saying something. <laughs> That's okay. Rob's trying to say something. <laughs> I'm just I'm just recording this up. Just keep 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 going along. We're good. I just have the information on the public comments. Okay, go ahead with the public comments. Uh, I think what you were alluding to, Mr. Mayor, and I had uh, sent out the information, and I believe all the, the trustees and the board have received all of the public comments uh, through our email system, uh, and it worked very well. Yep. I did summarize because we did, uh, as uh, has been suggested, we did receive quite a few. We received 76 emails. Uh, out of those, we had one uh, sure no. There was three uh, residents that were kind of non-committal and just concerned about as was said, uh, some parking issues, some noise issues, that kind of thing. And then uh, some other uh, just miscellaneous comments had to do with what's already been addressed with extra parking issues that may be created. And so it was uh, very impressive to see the number of public comments that we received. <coughs> then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. So move. Second. We have a motion and second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And any opposed? This meeting's adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>